Okay, let's go ahead and graph this function. So what's going on here? Well, we have a square root or a radical, then we have some other stuff going on here. So um, we're going to graph this, but in order to graph a function, now this specific function we're gonna obviously graph, but any function in uh, algebra okay, or mathematics, what you wanna do is know the basic shape. Okay, so we wanna have the basic uh, shape associated with a square root function, something like this. And then uh, obviously we have something else going on here. This is called a transformation. So uh, kind of the bigger picture when you're graphing functions, we wanna know the basic shape and then we wanna understand those uh, respective transformations. In other words, when a function gets uh, moved up, down, side to side, and even reflected, there's all, uh, all sorts of transformations. So this is gonna be a, uh, an example of how we uh, need to know the basic graph and then we need to go ahead and perform a transformation on this graph. But um, again, not that difficult. I'm gonna explain this step-by-step uh, step here in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So if you're at the middle school level, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I could help you excel in your math course. Now, if you're taking any test that has math on it, for example, the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACUPLACER, CLEP exam, uh, end of course exam, maybe a teacher certification exam, you get the idea. I can help you prepare and pass those exam uh, exams. If you homeschool, have a very comprehensive uh, homeschool math program you might want to check out. And if you don't have any math notes, don't panic. You can use my math notes. I'm gonna leave links to my math notes uh, in the description of this video, but you need to take your own math notes. Okay, I've been teaching math for decades. This is the secret to doing well in mathematics, okay? Just those students who have great math notes almost always end up getting grades like that. And the reverse is true. Those students who have no math notes get grades that look like this. So you just have to choose which grade you want. All right, let's go ahead and get going here. Now, uh, how many of you um, know how to do this problem? Okay, so I'm just curious, put your answer in the comment section. If that's the case, you literally can graph this in all of about maybe 17 seconds, all right? So if you know how to do it, put your answer in yes, I know what this is gonna look like. Go ahead and just take a piece of paper out and just draw the graph, and then we'll compare notes here in a second. But before I show you the actual graph, let's go ahead and just get familiar with the basic um, square root function, the square root, the square root of x graph. Okay, so again, anytime you're studying any function in algebra, okay, you want to know the basic graph. So, for example, quadratic equations, a basic graph is a parabola. Linear equations, a basic graph is a line, and on and on and on. Okay, so here. With the square root of x, we want to know the basic graph, and you're looking at it right here. Okay, so here's x, here's y. So uh, it starts at the origin, very specifically, 0, 0. Okay, and then it's going to have this shape. Now, anytime you, uh, you don't know how to graph anything, okay, even if you didn't know this, you can always make a table of values. Or this is really, really critical. Okay, so just pick some random points. Now, uh, when x is 0, when I plug in 0 for x, the square root of 0 is 0. Now, why are we starting at 0? Well, because we would have a problem if we went, oh, the square root of negative 9, all right? Well, this is not a real number. This would be, what, plus or minus 3i. This is an imaginary or complex number. So we have a problem uh, with taking the square root of negative numbers because we want to construct an actual graph. Okay, now there is, you know, the complex plane and everything else, but you know, I don't want to get into too many technical things here. But it's important that you, under that you understand that we can't take the square root of negative numbers. We're trying to construct a graph, I guess, in the terms of uh, the real number set. Okay, so that's why we start with zero, no negative numbers allowed. That's a really important. Um, uh, thing to highlight here. Okay, so zero is the lowest number we can go. Square root of zero is zero. And then this, of course, is a point, right? Zero, zero, right there. Now let's take a look at another number. Let's just make some random numbers here. When x is four, uh, we plug in four for x. Okay, so the square root of four is, of course, going to be positive negative two, but it's going to be two for our purposes right here. Okay, so 
When x is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there, there's 4. Let's call that point like 4, 2. Okay, so this is the point 4, 2. And you can just go ahead. Now, of course, I have nice, nice perfect squares here. You can plug in any number. Uh, 9 is square root of 9 is 3. 16 square root is 4. So you can see that the further out we go, it, it bends. It kind of has that behavior, right? Now, so that's important that you show that when you're graphing this because your teacher wants to see, you know, accentuate that. You don't want to go too crazy with it. You don't want to be like this, all right? So when you're graphing something, try to make it, try to show the characteristic pretty well, okay? Like if you gave me this graph like that, that would show me that you're not paying attention or you don't understand the square root function, okay? So basically something like this, okay? All right, so that's a basic square root of the X graph. Now, once you have this, we're going to apply a transformation. We're going to uh, do a uh, shift on this with this particular problem. But it's important, again, the, uh, that you know the basic shape of a graph, number one. Number two, that if you didn't even know the basic shape, that you could always construct a table of values, right? Remember that game, uh, Connect the Dots? This is the way you do this. You just get a bunch of points, and then you, you plug these uh, uh, X values into your function, and you'll get some Y values, and then you get a bunch of points, and just start plotting those points and see what uh, occurs, okay? So that's kind of your backup system here. But let's go ahead and get into this actual function. So f of x is equal to uh, x minus 5. Okay, so here is my table. Now I have a new table here, okay? Now let's notice that if I start with 0, okay, I would have 0 minus 5, Okay, so that's going to be negative 5. So I would be taking uh, the square root of negative 5. So f of 0, I'm trying to take the square root of negative 5. That's a no-no, right? Because I can't take the square root of a negative number. So what we're, you know, the domain of this function, okay, I can only take uh, the square root of, uh, of uh, 0 and numbers greater than 0. So, for example, the way I could do that is be like, okay, x minus 5, when are you greater than or equal to zero? Oh, okay. I could just solve this basic inequality, move uh, add five to both sides. It's when X is greater than or equal to five. Okay, so all my X's here have to be greater than or equal to five. So we'll start with five. So when five minus five, what's that? That's zero. Okay, all right. So now here, let's just go ahead and start plotting these points. So one, two, three, four, five. So when X is 5, y is 0, okay? So this is my first point here, okay? Now, uh, I could just kind of put some additional points. When x is 9, this is going to be what? 9 minus 4, I'm sorry, 9 minus 5 is 4, so that's 2, all right? So over here at 9, it is uh, 2, all right? So what is occurring here is this a graph, let me just draw this a little bit better, maybe something like here. Okay, so this graph was basically moved over this yellow graph, this original um, uh, square root of x function, which shifted over five units to the right, okay? That's what occurred here, right? So when you look at this, this is a shift. It's a transformation. Now, uh, this can really confuse the students. They'll say, they'll see this negative, and they'll think, oh, this uh, square root function got shifted over here to negative 5. It's going to look like that. No, nope, no, nope. it's, the, it's the opposite, okay? So when you see a negative, it shifts right, okay? It shifts right. And if you get confused, you can always kind of construct this table um, and, uh, you know, go through this step. Now, if we had a uh, positive like so, that would be a shift in the opposite direction, right? I don't want to confuse you too much, but um, you need to be very familiar uh, with this particular problem that there's other transformations that we can have. I could put a number. Matter of fact, let's just do something. I'm not going to do it, but we could have something like this, negative one-third square root of x plus 5 plus 7, okay? There's all uh, sorts of uh, nice things going on here. This is a transformation. This is a trend. This is going to uh, shift that basic um, graph. Okay. This is going to do something to that graph, and even this is going to do something to this graph. Okay, as well. So I teach this way more thoroughly in like my algebra two, college algebra, pre-calculus courses. But you really got to understand 
the transformations of functions. As a matter of fact, I teach this at the most advanced level in my pre-calculus course. Okay, so uh, understanding functions, understanding the graphs is very, very important. But uh, just to wrap it up, this particular function right here, that is the graph. Okay, and we can always construct a table of values. Now, if you got this right, if you knew that, then I must go ahead and give you a good old 1985 flat top haircut with an A plus and a few extra stars uh, today to make you feel extra special. So here we got a happy math student because what? Well, they're taking notes and they're watching my YouTube channel. Okay, so my job here, uh, because I'm obsessed with teaching math, is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if this little video helps you out, please go ahead and consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand math videos, basic to advanced mathematics, and I'm posting stuff constantly. Okay, I'll never run out of math problems to solve and to share with you. So uh, please take advantage of all my content that I do post, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.